This video was brought to you by Coder Camps. Make games, make money, make history. Yo, 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 what's up? It's the one only hip hop game by Hot 97 Gamers, episode four. On today's show, South Park. It's all about that South Park. We got crazy gameplay. We got a crazy interview. You don't want to miss South Park, the fractured butthole. All that content is right here, all right? Also, we're going to be talking about PlayStation Plus, the recent price hike, and why everybody needs to calm the F down, okay? Because the price hike is not a problem. You don't believe me? Listen to what I got to say on this episode. One love, God bless, let's get it started. Peace. Oh, uh, oh, uh, check it, oh, uh, hip hip hop gamer, one time listen up, man, check it, yo, yo. People doubted me, straight out the gate was the first mistake Five years in now, labeled as a heavyweight Game industry, where you the best, you get a lot of hate Guess my black skin enhanced the way that I can elevate uh, I got love for all parties involved They assassinate my character like it's part of the job But I'm built for the battle, uh, prepared for the worst My yeah. results are the best, cause I'm the hardest at work You never seen a style like mine Passion every time I grind Hated the love and I'm rolling, I'm rugged with punchlines So knuckle up if you're ready for this Contest. My content is quality, so quantity's the concept A bomb threat when I spit bars that's complex Apply pressure to the competition bottlenecks So who's next? I wanna know where your heart at Brooklyn born bread, that's where I got my honor at My persona is truth, that's where the love's at Hip hop and games, we gotta bring that love back Get down or lay down, you with me or against me I got a third eye so I can see if you a friend of me All I do is keep it real cause I would never back down Hip hop gamer, know the name Ain't made a fucking sound Verbally I'm automatic Welcome to my battleground Die for the shot Then I live in the background Apply pressure um, Yo what's going on It's your boy Hip Hop Gamer High 97 South Park The Fractured Butthole Let's go baby Alright cool, cool Stem cells Oh my god <laughs> Usually there's gotta be something cool upstairs. Uh, Carmen's journal. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait. Christmas is inside this. PS4. <laughs> Yo, this is classic. That's classic. I love it. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Yo, this is crazy. Oh, key code. Um, so the key code is fuck your mom. All right, cool. All right, so now that I got the key code. Man. Does this have a um, like uh? Like a um, menu letting you know where to go, like like a beacon telling you like. Yes, we will have that one in this game, in this demo. We don't. Okay. But yeah, but you will have one. Okay. Just check some stuff out. Yep. Video games? Oh, oh not small box. All right. Cool. I saw that. I thought it was the controller. So you remember about? The, oh uh, yes, so yes. Total ass control. So. Oh my god. So the way to do this to trigger it is you pull in both triggers and then pull your butt cheeks apart with the sticks. Oh my god! Now you can control it. So close it off. Let it go. Oh my god! This is the best doodle in the world, son! This, this is crazy! Total ass control. Don't forget that. Oh my god. Only in South Park. Hey, kid, do you like Jim Pokemon? Yeah! Alright, let's go. Watch out for the front door. Alright. Uh. Fuck. You. Mom. Oh my god. Amazing. Amazing, man. Amazing. Can y'all believe That's this? not enough, Crazy. Mosquito! We have to act fast before the Freedom Pals can! If there is someone in this town who knows someone who works at Netflix, then we have to find that person today! But we were gonna start our franchise plan with movies! The Super Craig Netflix series comes later! We can start with the Netflix series! You know that's what Freedom Pals are thinking! But who in this town could have a connection to Netflix? It could be anybody! That 
is what we must find out, Fast Pass. Mosquito, you run ABLs on all known Freedom Pals activity. Humankind and Fast Pass, see what you can learn about their POIs. Super Craig, just, I don't know, browse the internet or something. Let's go, Coon Friends! Dude, what the fuck? Who got this ordinary citizen into the coon lair? Uh, listen, bro, we are all superheroes and you aren't, so you can't hang out with us. Please do us all a solid and fuck off. That galaxy cube is a super powerful artifact from space, so don't touch it. Hey, 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 hey! Do not touch that! That device can blow up the entire Milky Way galaxy! Jesus, fuck! Mom! The new kid is trying to play with the cube of ultimate destruction! You be nice to all your friends, Eric. Be a good sharer. Good sharer? It'll blow up the fucking galaxy! Stupid bitch! Look, dude, we already told you, you can't play. You aren't a superhero. You don't have a costume. You don't have any superpowers. Freedom Pals are adding people to their franchise. We should be adding people to ours. This dork? Like, wearing a little crown? Does this look like a superhero to you? <sighs> all right, all right, have a seat, douchebag. All right, in order to play superheroes, you have to have a superhero persona. Then you can fill out your character sheet on Coonstagram. Do you have a Coonstagram page? Oh boy, you're not even on Coonstagram, huh? Well, I guess I can create one for you. Fucking unbelievable. So the first thing we need to fill out on your character sheet is your class. You know, what kind of superhero are you? So you can see, there's a, those are all the classes that you're going to be able to play. Yeah. But right now, these are the only ones that are locked. So you can actually scroll through and look at some of the other ones we have. Okay. Oh, assassin and cyborg. Now, later on, you're going to be able to mix them together. Do you have right. any What? You could be a cyborg karate kid. Oh, my God. So right now, you can look at the powers for these other guys, for the Brutalist and the Blaster. Uh, the only one that's available right now for the demo is the Speedster, but you can just read the yeah. one too. Um, like, you can check out this guy's ultimate power, the like Ionic Gas Cannon. I, oh my That's the, see, I would want to use that. I would want to do that. Check him, I like that. Just check his second power out. I charge that, this is that. Oh my god, that's the speaker. Journey to the heart of the enemy. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this game? Yo, this is crazy. And I can only pick Speedster? Right now for the demo, you can pick Speedster. Ah, oh, yes, like the Flash or Quicksilver. I like it. Okay, douchebag, but now, we need to find out what terrible thing in your past drives you. You see, douche, all superheroes have a compelling backstory. It's from that backstory that their powers gain meaning. Let's take you back to when you were just a child. You lay awake that night. Like so many other nights, you couldn't sleep because you knew you weren't like the other kids. You walked to the mirror. You looked in the mirror and you felt alone. And that's when it happened. A loud noise. You swore you could hear your mother calling for help. You know it's coming. You left your room. Out in the hallway, you saw two intruders in front of your parents' door. You had to stop them from hurting your parents. You knew you had the power to stop them. So for the first time, you called upon your speedster powers. As a super fast speedster hero, you bent space-time itself to spring into action with super speed. You moved in closer to the intruder to deliver a quantum punch. Ooh. Oh. Once his atoms returned to their original positions, the intruder realized what he was up against. Damn, we weren't expecting a superhero to live here. Desperately, the intruder struck our hero. Take this! <laughs> Emboldened, his fellow intruder moved into the fray. You don't scare us, superhero. But the intruders were only moving closer to their demise. You vibrated every second. Hey, what's the kid doing now? Once charged, you only needed one turn to defeat the hapless intruders. First, you gave the second intruder a taste of your atom smashing quantum fist. Oh, oh, gosh. oh! Shit, my atoms! With both intruders weakened, there was nothing they could do against the hero's final strike a supersonic dash! Ah, oh. oof, he was just too speedy! With the intruder soundly defeated, you thought you were safe until a third massive intruder entered the fray, bigger than the other two intruders combined! Ho ah. <laughs> I just flushed one little shit. Now here's one more! Before you could react, he swung his gargantuan fist into your small body, doing critical damage! Oh, wow. Wow. 
Wow. I heard, yes, but the intruder had made a critical mistake. He pissed you off. Summoning the last of your strength, you tapped into your ultimate ability, the multiverse strike. Oh, actually, back, back out for a second. Uh, hit, hit B. Multiverse strike. Okay, so walk here first and then try. Oh, out. okay. So you beat them. All seemed to be okay. But then you finally reached your parents' door. And what you saw when you opened that door changed your life forever and led you to fighting crime. You were too late. Because when you opened that door, you saw... You saw your dad fuck your mom. Wow. That's a pretty heavy backstory. You fight crime because you never forgot the night you weren't in time. And you saw your own father, the man you trusted, fuck your mom. It's like a ripple in time you can't ever change, isn't it? All right, now you need to go out into the town and do superhero stuff. You know, help people and fight crime and dumb shit like that. There's some starting costumes in the wardrobe, and remember, if you ever want to try out a different class, just come talk to me. Oh, man. So when you go up... Uh, and get that character town. sheet completely filled out. Yeah. You're not playing with us until you do. And we're going to jump you ahead. We're going to give you like some new gear. You look like a superhero. Yeah. And you can explore the uh, downtown area. So you don't want to hit your lap. Wow. And if you remember that, this is the parkour. You know? Oh, parkour. Yeah. Clear for takeoff. Wow. Clear for takeoff! Yeah. Yo, how do you make a list? Uh, that was a shitty way. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, this is too much, man. Oh, so go through town. Um, at the end of the street is a, is a big fight between the two superhero teams. Yeah. The Freedom Pals and the Freedom Friends. We were supposed to be a duo, remember, Tweak? Yeah, I remember. So when I walked out on Coon and Friends, you should have walked out with me. I like Coon and Friends. Because you had your own movies. Thank God you're here. They're really going at it. Super Craig had to have movies before Wonder Tweak was introduced. It made no Love sense otherwise. Game. Your whole group makes no yeah. sense. Because you're a traitor, Tweak, and now you're with a group of super traitors. This was started by you. By people who thought there should be preferential treatment to certain heroes. We aren't the ones who walked out of the fucking franchise, Mysterion. Eric, you must listen to me. Right now, I'm speaking to you telepathically. Get out of my head, Timmy. Your franchise is going nowhere. Face the truth, Eric. You guys are kind of douchebags. He just called us douchebags in my mind. He did? <laughs> All right, you son of a bitch. Oh, wow. Motherfucker! Good friend, deal with these assholes! Okay. Free us, Yeah. Freedom House is the future, kid. I just hope you realize that before it's too late. So the superheroes teams have different classes with the superheroes. So you and Mysterion are like the high damage team. You guys provide the most damage. Uh, Human Kite and Wonder Tweak, those are like the long range support. So they can right. attack from long range or even like kill people. Mm. And then your two tanks is Tupperware and Super Great. And those are the guys who take the most damage. Okay. And so now you are free to fight this way, whatever you want. <laughs> you right. cool. Another thing I like about Freedom Pals is we take our goddamn turn. What the? And that was the that was the charge though. Yes, yeah, so now you can get two moves. Oh got you. Okay. Oh New kid, I like the way you punch. And now you get an extra Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, that's like just power. Here comes a shot! Oh, wow. That's a good Forecast, 100% chance of panic attack. So watch out. If you go there, Mysterion's going to get you. That's a hit his heart. Just lay it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you totally do it. <laughs> oh, nearby ally. Oh. 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 Fucking lasers. This is my time. Oh, shit. We can actually reach you anyway. Oh, wow. Ah! Oh. 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 Oh.
It's Craig time. So I mean, super Craig time. Again, that's a turn order on the bottom right. Also, remember when this thing goes oh. up, uh, you'll have your ultimate. The only people that have ultimates in this is your your character and yeah. even Kai. Oh, okay. So if, I, so if I come here, will I be able to hit the mini way up here? Uh, well, it depends on the attacks, but his attacks always go left and right. So you wouldn't oh. be able to hit anybody. So I can switch my character, right? You can end his turn. You can skip his turn. I hate it when you do this. Oh, I'll go without yeah. idea, not before. This one actually reaches pretty far, though. Um, so you can actually get all of them. Oh, guys, guys. Okay. Here's what I think of your freedom, pal. Oh, that's crazy. Car! Car! Stay out of the street, damn kids! Fuck you, dude. It's Civil War, dick. Clear! Clear! That is phenomenal! You don't have to be on their side, no kid. Uh... Okay, I can't hit him, bro. Okay. I think you can't use that one on him because it's already at the edge, edge of the battle. You can't go back. Another thing I like about Freedom Palace is we take our goddamn turns. Alright, alright. Oh, Oh, is that meter? That meter comes in. It'll do extra damage if you hit into that speed bar. Oh, but you and ice! Wow! Oh. Ah, he's a tweet. Calm down. You can count on me! That's stuff. This is my time. It's Craig time. I mean, super Craig time. Yeah. You got chills, so you have to skip this turn. You think you're still on the right side? Yes. Wow. Luke, he's gonna kick your ass, Freedom Pals! No, seriously, you guys. He fucked the shit out of my brains. Uh, we grabbed him. We fought for a little bit, but his, his mental powers are too strong. So we did all that for nothing? Not quite. I got Timmy's cell phone. You did? There's sure to be a lead on that. Let's get this back to base. Super Craig can analyze it. I love this game. I love this game, dude. Uh, 
Yo, my own personal coverage. Yo, dude, dude, seriously, son, now that I got a chance to play it and not just see it, this is something, I'm going to tell you something straight up. That combat design could be used in AAA RPG games. Yeah. Like, seriously, that's how well done it is. I just feel that, um, uh, uh, I, you know, I don't have it yet at home, but as long as the tutorial is done in a great way so people can understand why it's so great, then you're good. As long as the tutorial is very well put together, you guys are great. Other than that, this is like what RPGs, if you're going to do turn-based, it, it has a certain freedom to the turn base. And there's so much to it that is deeper because of the uh, all the other characters, switch positions, the way the environment works. Dude, you, you guys redefine what turn-based RPG gameplay can be. Yo, seriously, man. Yo, yo, what's up? So, Gamers Episode 4, I hope y'all enjoyed that South Park gameplay because that joint is crazy. But now it's time to talk about PlayStation Plus. Now, everybody's going crazy over the price hike. You know what I'm saying? Now that PlayStation Plus will be $59.99 for the year. And people's getting all crazy, going crazy about, like, why they raising the price. Oh, Sony is greedy. Sony is this. Right? And I'm here to tell y'all that the PlayStation Plus price hike is not a problem at all. And you're going to understand why even more very soon. Now, why do I say that? Let's break it down. I got three main points. Three main bullet points I want to break down to make y'all understand something, right? First off, the first thing I want to talk about is Xbox Live. The second point I want to talk about is the new features that are coming and features in general. The third point I want to talk about is how... We as gamers, not just as gamers, but we as people overall, we always want more for less. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a fact. We always want as much as we can for the least amount that we could give. You know what I'm saying? So let's break that all these points down. First thing is this, Xbox Live. This is very simple. PlayStation Plus is now the price of Xbox Live. So all these years y'all been playing with Xbox, paying $60 a year, for Xbox Live, right? They no problems, no issues. Wanna know why? Because Xbox Live is great. It works good. It's amazing. Period. So if you have no problem with Xbox Live, why have a problem with PlayStation Plus raising the price to the same price of what y'all been spending when it came to Xbox? You know what I'm saying? That right there literally makes no sense to me. So that's one point to prove regarding PlayStation price hike, PlayStation Plus's price hike being a problem. Because it's not a problem at all. You feel me? It's not a problem. That's the first point right there. That was easy. But the second point goes deep. So follow me. Let's get it popping. The second point I want to talk about is new features to come, but also the features we already have. Okay? Now... Let's talk about the features that already exist on PlayStation 4, which to me makes it a steal. Like, what PlayStation Plus gives you and what PlayStation 4 overall gives you is a steal compared to everything that we have in, in terms of the ratio of what we actually pay for it. Let's break it down. So, live streaming. You can live stream to Twitch, to YouTube. Uh, um, and I think you can still live stream to Ustream or they cut that out. But I know you can, uh, I think Daily Motion as well. But um, the ability to live stream directly from your system. Just hit the share button, go through a few steps, boom, you live. You know what I'm saying? That's an amazing feature. That's great. Second thing, share play. Share play, that alone right there is a reason to buy PlayStation. Because if I got a game that my friend don't got, they could play the whole game. It don't take up no space on their hard drive or nothing. They could play the whole game via my PlayStation. I could be playing the Xbox while they playing my PlayStation from their house via SharePlay. Crazy. Then if you want to play multiplayer and they don't got the game, you want to play multiplayer with them in, 
You can just share your game and play multiplayer together, even though they don't own the game at all. That's amazing to me. You see what I'm saying? That's an incredible feature. So it's like you virtually, you know, giving them your controller and they can play your joint from no matter where they at. That is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Let's say they thinking about buying the game and they're not sure about it, but you got the game and you be like, yo, test it out. Amazing. You crazy? That's crazy right there. Let's go to another one. PS Now. First time ever you could have a Netflix design. Well, first time ever successfully. Because you got to give props what props is due um, when you think about on live when they was trying to do it. But with PlayStation Now, with or without a system, but on your PS4, you can play all your old games via a service. PlayStation Now. That's crazy to me. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy. So that right there is extremely valuable. And um, you can do that on the PlayStation 4. That's a steal. Right? Then, uh, in terms of features, then you got PlayStation View. Where you can like, literally watch television from your PlayStation. Like You don't need Verizon. You don't need Tom Warner. Kate, you don't need none of that. PlayStation, a PlayStation 4 alone will give you access to watch TV. Like, crazy. Like, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Like, this is insane right here. And then you get free monthly games as well. And don't give me that bull about, well, I don't like those games. So what if you like them or if you don't like them? Free is free. And there's somebody out there that didn't get a chance to play that particular game or buy that particular game that can play it now for free. You know what I'm saying? So there's value in free, period. And even with Share Factory, you know what I'm saying? You, how you can edit stuff and um, um, put things together and put it on your YouTube channel if you want. All of these things you can do on your PlayStation 4. Now, I know throughout this video, throughout this part, a lot of y'all are saying, what does some of these features got to do with PlayStation Plus? Like, I don't need PlayStation Plus to use Share Factory. What is Hip Hop Gamer talking about? Here's what I'm talking about, which I have to understand. Right? PlayStation Plus is a service. They make money on this service so that they'll have money to invest in new things and new features that they could give to you that may require or may not require the actual PlayStation Plus service. So having Share Factory, that takes time and money and research to even create that. You know what I'm saying? So you use money from one area to invest in new areas so that Sony can give you new features and new things that you don't have to pay for. You don't pay for Share Factory. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, these is things, some things you're going to pay for, some things they're going to give you as free for features. Share Play, you don't pay, pay for Share Play. That's just a feature built in the system. But it takes money and research to be able to invest, invest in that idea to make that idea a reality. You know what I'm saying? And you need money to invest to do a lot of these things. Because it takes a lot of work for someone to create these features. You see what I'm saying? So you got to think about that. You feel me? So that's why when I tell y'all that PlayStation Plus price hike, you should be excited. Because what it means is that there's new things coming that we don't even know about. That with this price hike, the money that they get from that, they'll be able to reinvest and give us way more. So either way, we still get a better deal. So we pay a little more to get a lot more back. The problem is a lot of people never want to invest in anything but yet want everything. Where do you think all of these things come from? Somebody got to put up some sort of money. Like, it, like investments happen. Like You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that even though we love the pleasure of playing games, there's still an investment that takes place in order for us to get the things that we say we want and get the things that we never even thought of. You understand what I mean? Like, look at Facebook spending $2 billion on Oculus. Like, the fact that that money was invested, VR is getting bigger than ever. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta think about that. Like, all of this stuff is a source to create more things that we could enjoy and talk about and play and share you know what i'm saying so that's the second point because what y'all need to understand is all this hate about a price hike you should be excited for what's to come 
from that price hike. I can understand that people raising prices and you ain't getting nothing new, but there's new things coming. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's exciting. And especially when you already got a great deal anyway. $60 a year? A year. Really? You pissed off about that? Don't be a gamer. Then. Like, like, that's crazy. Let's move on to the next joint. As people, as gamers, as everyday, you know, citizens, whatever, we always want more for less. We always want as much as we can take for as little as we can give. You know what I'm saying? And that's not cool because it's not fair. It's not balanced. But by nature, it's like we want that anyway. So I want to say something. I want to give you a great scenario to prove how horrible that way of thinking is in terms of wanting everything for free and don't want to invest in nothing. So in the PS3, Xbox 360 era, what was better, Xbox Live or PSN? During the 360 and PS3 era, what was better? If you don't say Xbox Live, I'm going to go to your house and I'm a doodle -doo on the edge of your toilet. I'm not going to doodle -doo in the toilet. I'm a doodle -doo on the edge of your toilet and walk out and tell you to go in there and you're going to need some Febreze. And matter of fact, I will cut your tongue off and make you and use your tongue to get the doodle -doo up. Because ain't no way in the world, this planet, ain't no way you're going to sit up there and tell me that Play PlayStation 3's online PSN was better than Xbox Live. Ain't no way you're going to tell me that if you own both systems or used them. Xbox Live was clearly, clearly the better internet um, platform for gaming when it comes to consoles. Easily. Over the PlayStation 3. Okay? So, with that being said, Xbox Live you had to pay for, right? PlayStation 3 was free, right? And even though it's free, people will still use the Xbox Live more. Because it's not about free. It's about quality. And you got to pay for quality. If you go to the store, or if you go, if you want to go get some food, you don't want to eat any old thing because it's free. If you got to pay for something that's quality, you'll pay for it because it's going into my body. And I want good stuff in my body. You feel me? Pause. You know what I'm saying? But this is just facts right here. So, uh... Now, in the PS4 and Xbox One era, PlayStation 4, PSN, is now winning. From a feature standpoint, performance standpoint, and all. Xbox Live is still great, but I mean, come on. Like, more people is using PSN now. Why? Ever since they charged the people with PSN, it's been getting better and better and better. And PS4 is a proof for that. So, yes, the PlayStation Plus price hike... If you're upset about it, I can't take you serious as a hardcore gamer. Because what we're about to get out of it, and the new features that's coming, and the fact that it was already a steal, $50 a year for what we got anyway, just be prepared to be excited. Because new announcements is coming that I can confirm. I can confirm that there's going to be some new announcements coming. Now, there's one announcement that's possible. I, I didn't get a confirmation on this. But it's possible that PlayStation Now or PlayStation View may be included with PlayStation Plus. Now, think about that. Imagine pay, paying $60 a year and PlayStation Now is a part of that package. Now, everybody, you already know what happened. You see what I'm saying? So this is very exciting. Please leave your comments and your thoughts about what I had to say about PlayStation Plus's price hype not being a problem. You should be excited about it. Everything that I broke down, let me know your thoughts. One love, God bless, and let's go to South Park right now because you saw the gameplay, you saw the energy, but now, coming from the horse's mouth, there's some new information that I've been trying to get on South Park I got a little bit, but there's still stuff that they're trying to withhold. But either way, enjoy the interview. One love. God bless your boy, Hip Hop Gamer, Hot 97. Let's go. Yo, yo, what's up? It's one and only Hip Hop Gamer, Hot 97. You be soft. 
what the hell did y'all do today? Well, like, seriously, like, what, 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 why are you doing this to me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why are you going to let me play the game? I don't even want to play it no more because it's that crazy. <laughs> you get excited about it. I oh, am, yeah, son. This joint is crazy, son. Yo, first off, so I got a chance to finally play South Park, The Fractured Butthole. I finally got a chance to play it. One thing that I told you is that I feel that y'all redefine what a turn-based RPG is for the future of games. This is something that's a blueprint that other companies should, I believe, should follow and learn to even capitalize on. What was the process? Like, uh... You know, making this game better than um, you know the previous one, but also just that system itself. What did you? What did y'all want to accomplish? What was the goal? How did it all come together? Well, in the first game, it's. I mean, there's a lot of tactics. It's an RPG, and a lot of people are like, you know, it's good, but you know, there could be more to the combat. And like the combat's, it's good, but it could, it. it after a while, it gets a little, a little stale. Right. But we were like, yeah, you know, we uh, we think we have some good ideas of how players can be really engaged the entire way through. I mean, you even played it twice. Yeah. And, and it seemed like yeah, I did better the second time. I did better the second time, sorry. But I won both times. But I did better the second. And it seems like you had fun playing the exact same combat because it turned out differently depending on what you we chose to do, yeah. right? And so it wasn't like you're just like, oh, I've, I've already done this. It's just like it's still fun doing it over and over again. Yo, that is that's. I'm glad you brought that point up because one of the things that I love is it makes you think about as if you're playing chess and there's so many ways to do the same thing but there's so many ways to do it so you always get something new out of it like every time you play it and I think that I think that was the goal and you guys achieved that now when it comes to the powers and being able to uh you know, combinate, you know, put different um, specialists and classes together. Uh, what have you found, you know, that took the gameplay to a whole nother level because of, you know, the combinations that you could put together? Well, it's all about that spacing and like positioning. Because so you saw if you if they just stand in a line and you just fire at each other, it's, you know, it, it's it's kind of boring. But when you have to figure out, like, if I knock this guy into this guy, it's going to do extra damage. Or if I peel this guy away from the group mm -hmm. and isolate him, it'll do extra damage. And so you're always thinking about different ways of where can I stand and where I can push this guy mm -hmm. or where can I lead this guy to and so you're constantly thinking just like you said it's, it's about chess it's it's superhero chess superhero chess yeah we talked about that when we was playing now the environment how effective is the environment in your gameplay because I know we saw the part where you had to get out the street because the car was coming and stuff like that but throughout the game will we see more things like that and will it affect the gameplay even more in terms of the environment oh most definitely it depends on where you're going to be at so if you're, if you're in a certain scene, you can think of some of your favorite places in South Park and you have, you're having a fight there. Um, what if there's this huge thing in the middle of the room? You got to fight around it. I mean, we can oh, even... Oh, what? <laughs> you serious? Oh, my God. All right, so now, um, in terms of this story, it's a superhero story, and it, like, leads right in, you know, from where Stick of the Truth uh, left off. So what I want to ask you is, what... Well, we, what's some of the things, without spoiling it, but what's some of the things that you could uh, give us a heads up on, you know, for the fans about what they can expect from this story and how does this story exceed what we previously played? Well, I don't want to give any secrets away. <laughs> you even say yourself, don't want to give any secrets away. But, I mean, we're... I, you can definitely expect the type of humor that you see in the show yeah. carried throughout. So what you love about the show, if you love that show, you're going to love this game because you're going to love the humor. And it's all going to tie in just like, just like if you were watching a really extended uh, version. version of the TV show. But you're in it and you're actually playing along. I can't wait to see this. Now, one of the things that I, I, I thought about when it came to South Park, and I'm not sure if y'all have that in this game, but... When you're creating your character and stuff like that, um, I think this would be so amazing. And I got this idea from where you could swamp your face in Instagram, I think is what it is. It'd be amazing if you guys had an app that lived alongside the game where you could take a regular human face and turn it into a South Park face so, and let that live on, in the game. And you could use that. In, yo, son, come on now, son. That'd be crazy. Sarah, you're taking notes on that? Okay. You, 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 yeah, you, you email me that later. And, uh, that would be insane. Have, you, have that even crossed your mind? Is that even possible? 
Uh, yeah, we can, I mean, maybe. I mean, it, it depends. It's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of, because South Park definitely has its own, like, art style. Yes. So, I mean, it depends on what, what the pitcher is like and but okay. you know it's it is something we can definitely look into and see what we could do i mean it's it's always something we're we're always willing to look at new ideas all right cool now since no, the, uh, all right, no, no, i respect that now since the pokemon go craze right knowing what south park is and stuff like that do you guys got plans to possibly either poke fun at Pokemon. And what I mean by that is, you know, you got DLC, you can release things later on. Do you guys got any plans to possibly poke fun at Pokemon? Because I think that'd be hilarious to see a South Park team of writers do something like that. And or looking at that, is there anything that you learned that you could possibly add to the South Park world going forward from what Pokemon Go did in the mobile world? I mean, we're always learning from from anywhere. We we any kind of reference we learn from. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as are we going to be doing that? I don't want to make any. I don't want to spoil anything for you. So <laughs> I'm trying, y'all. Y'all know how my interviews are. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying hard, man. But I think, but I really feel that that's something that as good as y'all are, I would I would say y'all if y'all pay attention to that it could be even bigger than what we already see with what they're doing i think that'd be crazy now the next thing i want to talk about is how how the story builds now we or we already know how funny south park can be but what i'm what i'm not concerned about but what i'm interested in seeing is how you guys plan to roll the story out the reason why i'm asking this question is because when we's at e3 yo i think marvel dc everybody gonna be calling y'all phone like a oh, word so it's like that like i think it's so funny so i'm just wondering how you guys plan to roll out the story to make it to make it funny but also make it relate to what's happening you know currently right now but see that's that is that is definitely the secret part of what makes a lot of south park stuff funny is it's super timely right it's yeah. always very current and so i can't say anything without oh, ruining really? the game for you i mean i'm on. trying <laughs> because i, I could, if just from playing it i can imagine what's in there that we don't know yet <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's crazy now i got i got something even crazier for you right have you guys thought about doing uh like taking the elements of the south park game and putting it in different worlds and what i mean by that is wwe i yo from the first time i seen south park stick of the truth i was like what if they had like you in a wrestling ring and you beating up the rock or something like that in south park like all these like cool cameos and stuff like that will we get some cool cameos in this upcoming South Park fractured butthole that you could talk about, I will say you are trying real hard. <laughs> oh my God, I'm being killed right now. His media training is on a thousand right now. Oh my God. So, will I? Right, so I. Right, I. Right, so I'll say this. I'll say this. Will there be any cameo appearances at all? Maybe. Maybe. I. Right, so in the world of journalism, maybe means yes. Maybe means no. It could be either or, but there could be something. All right, cool. So we gonna leave that at that. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. This is crazy. Now the next thing I want to say, and this right here, um, I want to go back to your childhood a bit. Okay. When you first started uh, playing video games, what game was it that you feel helped lead you into the career that you that you are experiencing today now? Oh man, you're gonna, you're gonna make me show my age. <laughs> I quit. This is the most amazing interview ever. Like, go ahead. I mean, like the old 2600 and ColecoVision games. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, go back. Like those are the games. Like, uh, I mean, even like the like the first Donkey Kongs that appeared on consoles. Yeah. Like, I was like, ah, this is awesome. I can do this. I can do this for a living because my I was playing all the time. My parents were like, what are you what are you doing with your life? Wow. I'm playing games, and I was like, hey, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be in games. <laughs> That's cr <laughs> so. Was Ubisoft your first choice, or like, how did it all come about for you? Because to me, I feel like what's important for fans to see is the journey. Like, I think that right there, when they watch it, they're like, wow, like he did that, or they really went through this. You know, what? I could do it too. Like you guys are very inspirational. You know how I feel, man. I love y'all. I don't care what role it is or whatever. Th th this is just beyond amazing from the stuff that I'm allowed to experience and see. And I thank y'all so much for it on a serious note. So, it's from a journey standpoint, walk us through that journey a little bit for you. So I started way back in the day as a tester on Sega Genesis. 
<laughs> you test it, get the belt. He gets to hold the belt. You get to hold the belt. You you was a tester on Sega Genesis. I tested games on the Sega Genesis. So yes, I was. A, I tested games for the Sega Genesis when I first started the industry. So, <laughs> I yo legend. I, I he's legendary right now. That's crazy. So I got a few more questions. We're gonna wrap it up now. This one right here, I think, is the most hilarious uh, part of the game, and that's the farting, right? <laughs> okay. So I gotta ask you a question. From a gameplay standpoint, mm -hmm. having farts and stuff like that, did did y'all get anybody to actually fart and record farts in the studio, or did y'all just sample it from somewhere? And the reason why I'm asking this is the, the reason why yeah, the reason why I'm asking this. Not only do they sound good, but these are questions that fans would want people like us to ask. Like you know what I'm saying? They're like, did somebody? Did y'all really get somebody to actually fart and y'all recorded their farts? If so, how, like what was that like? Did it stink bad? Like, like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not part of the audio team, but I know they do get the references wherever they can find them, and they spend a lot of times in those rooms, so I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I'm looking for it, man. So, oh, man, now I got two more questions to go wrap it up. Now, one of the things that um, I loved about Ubisoft overall as a company is their fearless. Their fearlessness as a company, they are fearless. They don't care about what nobody say. Like they do what they do because they know they're good at it, right? right? So, what's some of the things uh, about um, South Park? Some of the things that was challenging from a development standpoint that y'all managed to overcome and you know put into the game that y'all could say that wow, we we actually did that. We're proud of it. The fans, I think they're gonna really embrace this part of the game or whatever. What's what's some of the things you can name that you did in the game that allowed that feeling to come up? About. I mean, as a team, I mean, the thing that you actually really like about our game is the combat. The yes. fact that we're like, we want to make a combat that you can play the same combat over and over again, and it's fun every time you play it. Even if you play the same thing 10 times in a row, you're still having fun with it. And we think we've achieved that. And so, so, so this, this game is... You can play it multiple times and have fun with it every time. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the factions, so to speak, because right in the beginning of the game, you see, you know, you got Coonstagram and Coon Lair and all this other stuff, right? And it, it, obviously, there's a divide, and y'all and this person left the faction, and y'all start battling out. Is there like a multiplayer element to this game, or like an element to this game where you can actually create your own faction? I could have the hip hop gamers or something like that, or whatever you want. To call it, and um, you know, take your take your crew and go online and, and, and battle and have something like that beyond just the story. You're trying, you're trying real hard. Oh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> that would be crazy, though. <laughs> it would be crazy. Yeah, you got it. I, I can't, I can't say anything about that because you know. What, what does it I mean? just, I just want you to have a lot of fun and be surprised at this game when it comes out December. He <laughs> still got some time, man. So, I, 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 okay. Is there, are there, is there anything that's in this game that you have not revealed to the public yet? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you'll be surprised December 6th. So you'll be like, yeah, wait, wait what? <laughs> Yo, I'm trying, y'all. Look, seriously, man, love you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. Let them know who you are and what you're doing again. Scott Chrysostomo. I'm design manager on South Park, the fractured butthole. 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 <laughs> this is hilarious, man. I love it. And when the game come out? December 6th. December 6th. On Yo. Four, Xbox One, PC. In PC, what about there's no Nintendo NX there? On PC, Xbox One, <laughs> and PS4. Did y'all did y'all work on Nintendo at all just to see what they got coming? Like, did you get a chance to at least touch the development kit at all just to see what it's like? I haven't seen anything. I mean, that's me personally. The others, oh. others. I mean, we have so many developers yeah. spread throughout Ubisoft. Some people might have seen it, but I personally haven't seen it yet. All right, cool. Well, will I? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, will will uh, will South Park run any better on PlayStation Neo, or are y'all doing anything with the Neo to? Um, add more to South Park because they did say that uh, because you'll be able to do more maybe there's things that certain game developers that add to it that you won't see in a standard PS4 version so that I, I can't comment upon that <laughs> sorry. sorry man yo look so y'all don't, don't get mad at me I'm trying so y'all better respect it alright one love and God bless I thank you so much man South Park December 6th don't 
miss it. Pre-order now. All right, we out. Peace.